Hey everyone, Chris Young here, the Edible Insect. Um, thought it'd be time for a bit of an update. Quite a lot's been happening in the millworm farm. Um, it's uh, just after Easter now, and uh, one of the things that you'll um, you'll probably remember from the last video is we were just getting some pupation starting, and I'd set up a little a little environment for the pupae to put them on top of a, an upturned pan. The idea being when the beetles came out they would walk off the edge and drop into like a beetle environment. Well, um, been putting lots of photos on the Facebook page so if you want to keep a bit more up to date it's probably useful for you to go and like that. It's, uh, it's Facebook, um, the edible insect, or one word. Now um, what happened was I had uh, the pans stacked up as you've seen and had the um, pupa environment, pupae environment on the top and I bought a, a reptile heated wire, five, five kilowatt I think, no it was a bit more than that, um, can't remember the exact size but basically a uh, the lowest wattage reptile heater wire that I could get and I placed that underneath some glass which I managed to find in the loft and uh, taped it to the bottom of that because they're normally they normally the wire is either taped to the bottom of a of a glass tank that you've got your reptiles in or it's wrapped around a stone or whatever so um, I taped it to the bottom of the glass uh, stood the pans on that so I had two sets of pans um, uh, and what happened was I was uh, I'd kind of forgotten about the lower pans and the, uh, the the pupae environment on the top, I was keeping an eye on it, and very slowly you could see the the uh, the ridges getting more more defined on the back of the uh, pupae that were in there, um, but no beetles yet. And then about a week after that, I thought I should really check the lower levels. I'd forgotten about them, and I, I lifted up the pan, and there were beetles walking around. <laughs> so um, so what I think. I think it was to do with the temperature and possibly the humidity because that you know there's I've drilled a couple of holes for airflow in those lower those lower sections but ultimately they um, they have um, a lot more heat retained within them and because they were lower down they were getting the heat more directly as well from the from the glass so so I've abandoned the idea of this upturned this upturned pan you can't actually get that many pupae on there anyway i realize they were as you can see from the facebook pictures and hopefully um, i'll include it in this video as well but as you can see the you can't actually get that many on considering how many worms i want to try and breed here so i've abandoned that idea um, and i'm now working on uh a, what i'm going to call the beetle ramp or the beetle collector Maybe it needs a better name, but basically, I've um, again, I've been putting this on Facebook and Twitter, um, but I've created to start with a little cardboard ramp that goes round in a spiral up into a glass jar. And of course, the beetles are the only things that are going to walk up there. You're not going to get worms wriggling up there. And I wasn't, I wasn't really expecting it to work. I left it overnight and came in, and there were a couple of beetles in the jar. Unfortunately upside down and because it was glass they couldn't get back over again. Um, and there were about four or five on the ramp so it was quite a long ramp. I wasn't really expecting any, any of them to climb up it to be honest but uh, that was a pleasant surprise in the morning. So I've got some ideas now to create a beetle sorter. I've got some more pans in the post, should come any day and I'm going to um, have a little bit of a play. So I can create a proper little environment where I can just drop in, I can just drop in an entire batch of um, of pupae and worms and beetles from one of the lower sections when they start, you know, when beetles start appearing, um, and drop them in there, and then the beetles hopefully will walk walk up the ramp and drop down into a lower section. That's the plan. So I'll have a proper sorter, and. Um, I'm going to do it in such a way that the, the, when we're not at that stage of the life cycle where we have beetles, we can still use those pans for for growing uh, growing the worms up to a certain stage. So, so that's the next plan. Um, didn't have too many dead ones until we got to the last stage. Um, 
didn't have too many dead ones until we got to the to the last stage where they turn into pupae um, found that uh, you start to lose you lose a few more at that stage and also what happens because you haven't got um, lots and lots of worms moving around when they were shedding their skin before as the worms moved around I think they kind of broke down the castings um, and that broke down into a, into a fine powder almost and dropped through into the into the frass collector at the bottom but as soon as you start when the whole colony is effectively starting to pupate uh, what's happened is it looks like uh, there's not enough movement so you end up with a lot of a lot of skins sitting in there and a few dead ones it starts to smell a little bit so I haven't quite figured out the best approach for that yet and that's something I need to work on or think about probably for the next the next stage but anyway so so we have beetles they're, they're getting darker um, my understanding is as soon as they're really dark they will start mating and laying eggs and that's usually over the space of a week or two um, that will start happening so I've set up three environments now to test out different different substrates. So I've got an environment where I'm just using wheat bran, which seemed to be the most effective in terms of that was the first environment where the beetles appeared. I've got another environment with um, with organic oats, large oats they are, um, and then the environment that I really want to get to work. This is the whole purpose of this, or one of the purposes, is where I've been dehydrating vegetables like potato peel and um, carrot peel and even avocado um, avocado outsides um, I've created a dehydrator at the moment it's not very uh, it's not very um, what shall I say easy to use because it's a it's just an old um, it's an old shelf from an from an oven and I got it hooked up at the top of my cabinet. So because because I've got the heating underneath now, underneath my environment for the mealworms, it's creating a lot, a lot of movement of heat. So it's ideal for having a dehydrator. So I do plan to get some mesh and make some proper drawers that I can just slide in and out and drop all the peelings in. But anyway, it works okay. So I've been collecting up the peel um, and then putting them in a food processor to make them a bit smaller, and that creates a. Um, a substrate which is basically just waste from the house waste peelings etc which is ideal I don't really want to be using crops because I want this to be as sustainable as possible and if I've got to buy in crops where they've had to clear fields and and grow the crops and I don't know what they've used on those crops um, I use a lot of water it's not really ideal in my opinion so I'm really hoping that these vegetables vegetable scraps will work so I've got another environment with those in uh, again they've been on Facebook and Twitter I've been showing those but I'll put them into the video here and I've got beetles sitting above above these uh, three environments hopefully they'll start laying their eggs and they'll drop down and then when I start to see some worms appearing I can um, move those into into higher environments where the frass will start dropping down so uh, so that's where we're at we're just so effectively we're just now about to start on the on the next generation of mealworms which will be the edible ones because i'll know exactly what they've been fed I'll see you next time